been crying this morning because um, if you made it from last Sunday to this Sunday, you should already be prompt and crying. If you if you made it through the whole week, you should already be prompt and crying. If if you made it from yesterday to today. You should already be prompt and proud. If you had the ability to walk in the door this morning, if you understood how hard it was for somebody else, but you had the blessing and the activity of your limbs. See, you've already been prompt and proud, so I don't want to do that for you because it's your responsibility to get there. That's not what we're here to do at Relevant. God's already given you that. There was a promise that he'd already done it. There's a, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise his name song. I came to give them all I got today. I came to leave it all here today. Because I don't want to take it back home today. I ain't got no reason to take it home. I've been looking forward to Sunday since last Sunday. I've been excited about Sunday since I left here last Sunday. Matter of fact, on Wednesday at Bible study, I was already looking forward to Sunday. So if y'all not ready today, I can't get you ready. When the pastor, I'm sorry, when our apostle comes up, if y'all not ready, he can't get you ready. He's going to give you a word that's going to rest on your souls. And I hope y'all take that word home with you and let it live in you. And as minister, Grayson always says, it's rightly divided to lay on you. The choir, they going to praise, but they're not going to do it for you. They're actually doing it for them. Now, if y'all can get with them, that's good. But I guarantee you they're going to do it anyway. They're going to do it anyway. Because what we have here, already here, we got healing. That's something that's evident that God has already done. We got miracles sitting out in the congregation. That's something that God has already done. We got evidence of provision. When you look over at those my uh, the grace and children that's something that God has already done and when you look at me hmm, you don't even know the half of it so we already know what God has already done and we talked about it this morning how God has already done and the Bible teaches what he already said and how he's going to continue to do it so if you're not ready I don't know what to tell you. You need to get ready, get with us, and come on aboard. Welcome to Relevant Empowered Church. What we already believe, we already know. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. I hope y'all are ready, because I am. I was ready last Sunday. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, when we said order, y'all know what to do in here. And I don't know why y'all sitting so far apart from each other because we said we love each other. It's only a few of us here. So love on each other today. Make sure you love somebody before you leave out of here because today may be your last opportunity to see that person. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Matter of fact, we don't know what the end of today holds. So be it your business before you leave to tell somebody you love them and not the person you always tell. Find somebody you don't usually talk to and tell them that you love them. Make sure that you give them some love. Not your kind of love, but some godly love, okay? Can we do that today? Y'all be blessed, okay? I will be reading Matthew 28, 5 and 6. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for 
For I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And I will be reading Acts 1, 1 through 3. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, he through the Holy Ghost, have given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking and speaking of the things pertaining to to the kingdom of God, Acts one one through three. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for another opportunity to come to, to come into your house, Father God. Um, before we ask for anything else, Father God, we want to ask for forgiveness of our sins, Father God. I thank you for being such a big God. I thank you for being such a mighty God. I thank you for continuing to work miracles for us. I thank you for continuing to provide for us, Father God. Um, Keep us, Father God. Keep us. I thank you for keeping us day by day, Father God. Um, I thank you that you're still, you still love us, Father God, and you love us so much that you sent your only son for us, Father God, for us, for all of us, for all eight billion of us, Father God. Keep us safe, Father God. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to keep going. Because I tell you, I don't know what you come to do. But one thing I came to do is lift them up. I came to lift them and give them everything that I've got. Hallelujah. Right there. 
do it one more time. You should have it by now. I don't know what you come to do. You say, I don't know what you come to do. Say, I don't know what you come to do. You say, I don't know what you come to do. Oh, but I know what I come to do. You say, but. Can you say it? But let's go, I y'all. Know what I oh, 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 I come to clap my hands. 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 I come to do my dance. 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 I come to lift him up. I come to lift him up.
gonna get me where I got to go. I don't know what's gonna happen this week. I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of today. I don't even know what's gonna happen before I leave here. But I do know one thing. You are not going to keep me from calling on this night. You can get your healing from calling on his name. You can get your deliverance from calling on his name. You can get whatever you need from calling on his name. All he wants you to do is to give it all to him. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, open up your glad mouths and celebrate him. Hallelujah. Come on, I said open up your mouth. Come on, you can keep on open. Come on, praise him. God, we glorify you. God, we honor you. Didn't have to do it, but you did. Woke us up this morning. Started us on our way. Somebody say glory. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory. I, I, I just got a few announcements. I'm not going to hold you long, and then we're going to get right back into praise, and then somebody say, here comes the word. Hallelujah. I just, real quick, uh, I want to remind uh, the ministry team that we will have a 45-minute meeting right after service. The ministry team, we've got a 45-minute meeting, meeting, meeting right after service. You know who you are. Um, also, uh, we have an event coming up. It'll be happening on July 27th. Yes. Uh, we are going to the Blue Bayou Water Park. Blue Bayou Water Park. All money is due before June 30th. Um, you can see Minister Angela Crockett. She is home, but she is watching. Uh, she was involved in an accident this past week. Amen. Uh, I said she was home and she was watching. Glory to God. So we didn't have to do any bereavement checks this weekend. And so we thank God for the woman of God. We thank God for sparing her life. God, we honor you that it could have been another way, but it was not. We, great, we are grateful for your grace. We're grateful for your mercy, and we're grateful for your provision. Somebody shout glory in the house. Also, um, on April, I gave y'all the wrong date last week. On April the 28th, it's the last Sunday in this month at 1.30 p.m. I'll be preaching uh, for um, Pastor Mitchell's anniversary at Andrew Chapel in Canton, Mississippi. Uh, so we'll be at Andrew Chapel in Canton, Mississippi at 1.30 um, on April 28th. Um, looking forward to seeing all of you there as we celebrate and bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I also want to uh, just let you know, we have began um, training some men uh, to be deacons in this church. And so we're looking for you to encourage them as they learn and grow. Amen. And I want to say this out loud because I want to go and deal with the devil before he rears his ugly head. Uh, let me rebuke it before you say it. That way I ain't got to rebuke you. Um, I ain't ask your assistance or your help in choosing them. I'm gonna say it again. I ain't asked, I ain't, if you know, I ain't asked nobody what you thought about who I chose. So that means I don't need to hear from you about who I chose. I'm, I'm trying to tell you now, because I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it's a lot of other churches to be at. We choose based on capacity. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? What does that mean? That means you got the capacity to be who God wants you to be. Even though you ain't acting like it right now sometimes. It means you got the ability to be who God called you to be. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. And so what we believe is that teaching and training changes people. Being in the presence of God changes people. Amen. Amen. They don't change because we wish them well. 
They don't change because we beat them up over, over the head. Amen. They don't change because we talk about them like a dirty dog. They change through the word and through prayer. And so as these men are undergoing training, hallelujah, I want you to be praying for their change. I want you to be, I want you to be praying for their educare. The word educare is Latin for education. It means to draw out. Amen. Not to sit in a, in a classroom and indoctrinate. Y'all miss that. Yeah, yeah. But it means to draw out. And so we're going to be drawing out of these men what God has put on the inside of them since the very foundations of the world. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. I'll say this and I'll be done. I, I never forget my mama said, I ain't marry your daddy because of what he had. She said, I married him because of what I knew he was going to have. <laughs> I know God can do anything. Yeah. I said, do y'all know God can do anything?
awesome in power and he's our God he's not just awesome but he's our God somebody say he's my God and he's a real good God That's my. he's a real good God he's a real good God he's a real good God he's a real good God, a real good God. Woo! yes you are yes you are God I bless you Yes, you are. Lord, we love you. God, I, I bless you. I lift you. Hey! 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 God, we lift you. God, we lift you. We worship. We worship. My God. 
Just taking a little point of personal privilege. I, I got I got a little worship I gotta get out. Y'all can watch if you want or you can join, but my God is greater. Nah, nah, my God. Thank you for making ways out of no way. Thank you for healing and restoration power. Thank you for raising people off of sick beds. Thank you for healing joints that are being disrupted by arthritis. We worship you for healing us. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And we give you glory. We give you honor. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Blood of believers. Come on. Shake that mess loose. Come on and let's begin to wave holy hands. Come on. Come on, wave holy hands. Put him first. I got problems. I got issues. Somebody don't like me. I don't like somebody. But I worship you. We receive it, God. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the breaker. Break it. Break the spirit that makes worship hard. 
break the spirit that makes praise hard. Break, break it. You're free to lift your hands. For the Bible says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says that there is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. I walk with them. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Don't rush this. I know you want to get to something else. Don't rush this. You don't know what kind of hell is looking at you this week. You don't know what struggle is waiting on you. Why not get ready? Faithful. He's been faithful. He's been better than we're worshiping, but we're going to go on. He's been better than you're shouting, but we're going to go on. He's been better than your hands half lifted, but we're going to go on. stop you um, I'm simply gonna go on with the program don't 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 stop nothing you doing don't don't worry about interrupting nothing don't don't worry about nothing just dial in just dial in dial in and then let Woo! Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. If you're at home, don't just look. If you're at home, don't just look. God said, I want to do it in your house. I want to do it in your house. Right where you are. Would you give God a prayer? Open up your mouth and give him glory. All right. (laughs) 
my Lord. Yes, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I think we're ready now. We're ready now. Somebody say, here comes the word. I didn't hear you. I said, here comes the word. Oh, that's an Evan thing right there. I know when I hear Evan. Do it again, Evan. Do something else, Evan, right quick before we go. I don't know what's wrong with y'all in boring church. I don't want no boring church. Yes, I might not die, die, die. All right, let's go home. Somebody shout glory. Amen. Take your handy dandy cell phones out, and if you would, go on and share the live. Let everybody know that Rick is live. Amen. Oh my God. Nah, 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 nah. She been waiting on that the whole service. Chapter 1, verse 3. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And the word of the Lord declares, to whom also he showed himself alive after this passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, after the grave. Amen. We're in uh, the second installment of our teaching uh, after the grave, and we're going to um, move uh, further into this. I want you to be attentive today, as I'm going to say some things that we said last week, but we're going to go another further. Come on, somebody say another further. Um, and we want to achieve some things uh, in this teaching today. Uh, we want to establish some things. We want to establish, first of all, uh, the fact that the kingdom of God was established by Jesus after the grave. Amen. Somebody say, after the grave. We want to make sure that we establish that, but not only that, we want to establish what he did in establishing the kingdom. And then after that, we want to understand how he did it. Is that all right? right. Amen. Amen. And so um, let's get started. Uh, If you don't mind, I'd ask you, if you would, let's um, review a little bit. Can we review? Um, Last week, we established the importance of the first 40 days after the resurrection. Let me shout out the musicians. Can y'all give the musicians a hand? Amen. Come on, celebrate the singers. Amen. Hey, hey, singers, y'all saw how free y'all were today and and, and just went. That's it right there. Amen. Amen. When you're a singer, amen, you don't get caught up. Don't 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 get caught up in the fact that you just a singer. You you are leading folk in worship. Amen. And 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 you notice what happened when when the folk up here got when they got caught on fire? That thing got contagious. Amen. And so I want to celebrate you for allowing yourselves to be free today. Celebrate the singers. Did not that woman of God sing her heart out up here? Our God is greater. Amen. Come on, celebrate her one last time. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm just in a celebrating mood today. And I believe in celebrating. I believe in celebrating, folk. Amen. If you made it this morning, celebrate yourself. 
Watch this. If it was rough making it this morning, celebrate. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We established the importance of the first 40 days after the resurrection. We determined that the first 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus institutes or he establishes the, his kingdom on earth. Uh, we, we also uh, established the significance of the establishment of the kingdom of God. We talked about the fact that there were many who misunderstood uh, what the scripture was saying when it said that Jesus would establish his kingdom uh, on the earth. And they believed that he meant that he would be reestablishing uh, political order in Jerusalem and that this establishment of political order would be built on and based on Christ and his way. We looked at Acts chapter 1. Verses 1 through 3, and we talked about how God gave commandments, how Jesus gave commandments after he resurrected to his disciples. And he told them in Matthew 28, 19, to go ye therefore. We talked about the fact that he proved that he was alive. And we looked at 1 Corinthians 15, 5 through 8. We looked at the fact that he was seen of Cephas, and then the 12, and then he was seen above 500. That's verse 6 um, um, of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then we looked at how he was seen of James and all the apostles and, and how he ate boiled fish in order to prove that he was alive. And then we talked about how he actually taught only the things about the kingdom. All right. And then we went on and we further established the fact that when in Acts chapter one, verse three, where the word of God declares and speaking of things pertaining, uh, pertaining to the kingdom of God, we established that kingdom meant royal power or kinship, that it meant dominion and rule. And it was not to be confused with an actual kingdom, but rather the right or the authority to rule over a kingdom. Are we all together so far? So, to, so this morning, let's go to Luke chapter 24. We're going to go to Luke chapter 24. Are y'all ready for the word this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm ready to drop it. I've been excited all week about uh, diving back into this teaching. Um, and I'm looking forward to helping us all understand better uh, the, the purpose, the plan, and the power of God in the teaching. Woman of God, do you have Luke 24, verse 25? Uh, if you if you have that or if you if you don't have that, uh, I'm going to read it real quick. Uh, Luke chapter 24, uh, verse 25 says, and he released unto them him that was. I'm sorry, I'm, on, I'm in 23, my fault, y'all. 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Keep going. You want ought, ought not, I'm sorry, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Now watch what's happening here. Here in Luke 25, I want you to understand that Jesus is giving revelation of the Old Testament. He says, O oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He's talking about what the prophet spoke about himself. And because he's talking about what the prophet spoke about himself, they would not believe that Jesus had to suffer what he, was, what he suffered through. So he is still dealing with disbelief on the other side of being resurrected. After dealing with disbelief on the other side of being resurrected, we see in verse 27 where it says, and beginning at Moses. Remember last week we said, and beginning at Moses meant that he began where? In Genesis. Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, the word of the Lord here, prophets, it means all the way up through Malachi. So Jesus starts teaching at Genesis. Mm -hmm. And he goes all the way through Malachi. And the Bible says that he expounds on the scripture. This word expounded, it means it's a twofold message. It means that he stuck to the text. In other words, what he was explaining, he stuck to the text. He ain't add nothing to it. So he, he did not read his mind into the scripture. Are y'all with me? All right. And so um, um, it says this word expounded also means to unfold the meaning of what is said. 
So when you come to church on Sundays, the job of the preacher, I'm going to help y'all, the job of the preacher is not to make you feel good or better about life. Um, I'm, I'm sa- the job of the preacher, watch this, is to help to expound or to help to unfold the meaning of what is said. Why is that important? It's important because the Bible, uh, 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 let, not, let me not say the Bible, the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And when we, say the, when we say the scriptures, we mean the Old Testament. Okay. I'm going to prove it in a minute. When you see in the scripture the word, the scriptures, he's talking about the Old Testament. Okay. Genesis to Malachi. Are y'all with me? And so the job of the preacher is to help you to understand because uh, uh, the scripture was written in Hebrew. And when they began, they had to translate the Hebrew. And when they translated the Hebrew, they had to do it because the Jewish people had began to lose the Hebrew language. And they were only speaking the language of those who had oppressed them. And so that's how we end up with the uh, Septuagint, which is the Old Testament translated into the Greek. Okay. Y'all see how everything's happening? Mm-hmm. So when it, it loses its original language or understanding, the preacher got to come and help you to understand the original language or understand the meaning of the text so you don't be believing God for something he ain't never said he was going to do. Gotcha. Okay. Y'all all right? So if preaching and teaching does not include unfolding, unveiling, revealing what the scripture is saying, then we are doing the people of God an injustice. Okay. Is this making sense? So Jesus expounds unto them in all the scriptures. This word scripture comes from uh, the word graphe. Graphe, uh, it speaks of Moses to Malachi. All right. Well, what was he talking about? What was he expounding on? He was only expounding on stuff that concerned him. All right. Only stuff that concerned him. Woman of God, do you have Luke 24, 32? And they said one unto another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us to the scriptures. All right, now hold on. Now, after the resurrection, remember, he is seen by two folk who are walking on their way. They were discussing Jesus. Oh, we thought he was going to do this. We thought he was going to do that. But he ain't even doing it. And they were talking to Jesus and didn't know who they were talking to. Oh, my. And everything that they said that he hadn't done, he had already done it. But they didn't recognize yeah. it. And yeah. they didn't recognize it because their eyes were not open. Are y'all with me? See, sometimes everything God has done is all around you, but when your eyes are not open, you don't even know what you got. You don't know you are already blessed. You're around here praying for blessings that you already got. How do I know I got blessings? Because Ephesians chapter 1 says that we are blessed with our spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Tell your neighbor, I'm already blessed. I don't pray to be blessed. I walk in blessings. God, help me in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, and, and when my eyes are open, then I can see that I'm blessed. Yeah. When my eyes are open, I can wake up and not have a car, but I still got my people. Yeah. Yeah. I know that I'm blessed because I can look in my bank account and not see enough money, but I can still see my mama alive. Right. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, man. But it's not until my eyes are open that I understand that I'm blessed. May have gotten fired yesterday, but I heard that they're still making jobs. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. blessed. All right. Now watch this. Watch this too, that they was walking with Jesus. And the Bible says that as they walked, Jesus began to do what to them? He opened to them the scripture. Uh, 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 This word open, it means to open thoroughly one's mind and soul. It said that he opened to us what? The scripture. 
And as a result of the scripture being open, their minds was open, their, he, their ears were open, their souls were open. And the Bible says, did not our hearts, hearts burn. burn within? Why? Because when the word of God makes sense, y'all yeah. 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 ain't saying nothing. Yeah. When the word of God, somebody said, when it makes sense. When it makes sense. Now, I don't know if I told y'all this last week, but I told uh, the, the brothers this morning, I told them, I said, uh, the problem with not rightly dividing the word and not having good understanding of the word of God is that we create conflicts in the scripture. Hmm. And when we create conflicts in the scripture, we'll say the Bible says something over here, and then somebody who reads a little more than you give them credit for, they done read where it says something else over there. And to them, there's contradiction. Yeah. But it's only contradiction because you ain't interpreting it right. You using an old English word and you making it make sense for 2024. But what you don't know is, is that they put that word there because English was underdeveloped at the time. And that word that has been put there don't even mean the same thing in another place. Is this making sense? All right. Now, it said that while uh, he opened. To, to open thoroughly one's mind or soul. He opened the scripture to them because they didn't have understanding of the scripture. They didn't know it. All they knew was how to read and try to obey what they saw. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like us. We'll read something in the Bible and when we read it, we take it at face and we run away with it. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah. Yeah. No, sir. Let me go to commercial. I'm going to give you an example. All right. Can we just go to commercial? I'm going to give you an example. Now, there's a passage of scripture in 1 Timothy, I believe chapter 3, where it says um, that the women are to keep silent in the church. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Now, if you read that on his face, uh, what you will believe is that women ain't supposed to say nothing, they ain't supposed to operate, they ain't supposed to dot, 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 right? Right, right. Uh, and then you will read where a woman's not to usurp authority over what? Man. A man. Yeah. Now, the problem is not the fact that you don't, you're not reading what you're reading. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you think woman means woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if there's no expounding on the scripture, you don't understand that here, this word woman, in the Greek, it means wife. Yeah. Help us. So now when I connect uh, uh, that the woman, wife, is not to usurp authority over her husband... Okay. The application that Paul was making was in the church. Yeah. He said that in the church, and here's why, because they was having issues with the women in the church, not because they were ruling and crazy and all of that, but they had just now started allowing women to come to church. Hmm. Women did not learn and study the scripture. So they're now just now allowing them to do that. As a result of that, and the men sat on one side, the women sat on the other side. So when the teacher stands up, the rabbi, uh, or, 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 or not the rabbi at that time, the minister, the bishop, or the fivefold, they stand up to teach. Mm -hmm. And the women are not understanding. So they're following the rule, and guess what they're doing? They're asking their husbands. Okay. But they're doing it doing church service. Okay. So the church sent a letter to Paul, Paul, what are we going to do about these women? They, they, we, we try, and Paul says, all right, here's what we're going to do, and it's going to be the case for all the churches, because, you know, they'll get you on that. They'll say, because, you know, if, if you're not learning, you'll say, oh, he was just talking to the church at Corinth. But you got to keep reading, because it says to all the churches. Mm -hmm. And if you don't keep reading, somebody who wants to get you on that point, they'll say, nope, he's talking to all the churches, even your church, the women in your church need to be quiet. But nope, he was responding to a question that they asked about the, about the behavior of women in the church. Mm -hmm. But when you read it on his face, you think they're just talking about all the women in here. Hmm. No. Go and read. That word woman in the Greek is translated to mean wives. So wives, keep silent and ask your husband when you get home instead of hollering across the church. What are he talking about? Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. What? What he? Now what they mean? Now what they mean, Will Earl? Be quiet. Hush. Now hush. 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 
So they said, order. And they said, wives, be quiet. This make sense? This ain't got nothing to do with silencing nobody. It has nothing to do with telling people to be quiet. It was the establishment, it was the reestablishment of order. Y'all remember order back in January? He comes and he reestablishes the order. He says, I don't care what it looked like, the same order at home is the same order in the house. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It makes sense. We all right? We all right. All right. Back from commercial. Because I want you to have an understanding of what it is and why this is important. All right. Now, now, he expounded unto them all the things. So we, we, we now understand that Jesus opens the understanding of the apostles. He establishes himself as king. We almost done in the earth by us expounding on the scripture and teaching concerning the kingdom. Remember this word kingdom, it means it comes from the uh, word basilia. It means having power or authority to rule. What governs the kingdom? The gospel. That's all that governs the kingdom. The only thing that governs the kingdom is the gospel. All right. I, I'm a, I'm a, I want to go, can you go to Matthew 28, 18 real quick? Okay. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven. Hold on. All what? All power. All power. Now, this is after the grave. He sees the disciples. He tells them all power. This word power, it comes from the word exousia. It's not like dunamis. It comes from exousia. This word exousia, watch this. It means the liberty to exercise will. Power of authority. The word authority means influence. Power or the right to rule. The word right means privilege. So in other words, he says um, all power, all authority the, 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 the authority to exercise my will in the earth realm has been given to me. Are y'all with me? So when he says all power, he is saying essentially I've been given my kingship. I don't know, how, I don't know if you know. Can you imagine if one of your homeboys walked up to you and said, yo, they just made me king. You know what that means for you, don't it? Oh, y'all missing all this. I get it. Uh, 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 and I hate to use this example, but, but if your daddy win the lottery, huh. what does that mean for your life? Uh, uh, uh. See, if the disciples knew what he was saying, as soon as they heard him say, our power has been given unto me, they would have lost their minds. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because if I've been connected to power for three and a half years, yeah. glory to God.